What was your worst shit I procrastinated for to long experience? When I said I'll start studying at 12 o'clock, but when I checked the time it was 12.01, and then I was like lol nvm, I'll actually start at 1300 hours and the same thing happened over and over, and before you know it, it was midnight. It was my daughter's wedding last year. I still feel sick when I think about it. Nothing went too wrong and she was still happy with it, but I seriously dropped the ball on getting the decorations ready, the food. For all the planning we had put into it, it was not the glamorous affair it was going to be. The day of the wedding my brain completely checked out. Only half of what was planned got done. She just celebrated her first anniversary, and I still can't think about her wedding without getting a gut punch of guilty. I want her to over. When classes were suspended for a few days, and it was the night before my midterm and stats. That's when I realized I procrastinated too much, and I wasn't prepared whatsoever for the exam. Luckily, it was also suspended on that day as well. In like grade 6 or 7, when we were doing a unit on probability and math our teacher decided it would be fun to have us all essentially turn the class into a casino, so he had us all design games, where we weren't allowed to make it rigged, so it was impossible to win, but the house had to win 60% of the time. It took me forever to come up with a good idea, and when I finally did I realized I had procrastinated way too long, and I only had two nights to finish this project out of the two weeks we had, so I completely overcompensated. My dad's a builder so let's just say at a very young age I knew how to use power tools and there was a lot of wood laying around my house. I designed a car racing game that you'd bet on and there were 5 lanes on a wood track about 8 feet long that slopes downhill. I drilled holes in the lanes at the top and there was a board underneath on a hinge that had nails in it. The nails fit through the holes, and when you rip the lower board the nails would retract and release the cars. The way I accomplished the 60% house win was I hammered two of the five nails in a little bit farther than the other three, so those cars would release slightly earlier. I would also mix up the Hot Wheels cars each time, so people wouldn't quite catch on. I had a couple of sports cars, and then some heavier ones like a dump truck and a school bus, and so the weight difference between the cars gave the illusion of it being completely random. On presentation day I quickly realized I had completely over-engineered this casino game, because most other people had just come up with card tricks or some variation on Plinko or Wheel of Fortune. I was watching friends on Netflix, but I had to shit. So I was like ah fuck it, I'll just shit after a few more episodes and afterwards the urge to shit disappeared. The next morning I had to shit, but I was late for class, and didn't have time to wash up in the bathroom so unfortunately I didn't get to shit then either. A few hours pass, and I still don't have to shit. Eventually this cycle went on for about a week and I ended up severely constipated. I would keep eating and eating but no shits. Eventually my stomach felt so awful all the time, and I was always in pain, so I took a few laxatives and fell asleep. I wake up 6 hours later, because I had a dream I was going to the bathroom, but when I woke up I shit myself all over my bed. In college, doing a performance course, I had to keep a handwritten journal of all my classes as I took them, so I could chart my progress throughout the term, which would then be handed in, to be assessed with my final performance. I started writing them the day before the hand in deadline. 3 months of classes, handwritten. 3 classes a week, at least a page for each class. Yeah I pulled my finger out after that. I studied for my makeup a few days ago. Not the 3 months recommended, not even 3 weeks, but 3 days before. There was also a particularly stupid one in high school that cost me. I was in my senior year and deep in senioritis. I slacked off most in my military history class, putting in the bare amount of effort for an easy A. The class had weekly current event papers due. Really simple things, just write a paragraph about some conflict or new piece of tech being revealed in the world. It had the most lenient late policy ever. You could submit stuff months later for credit. Well I just got super lazy, and didn't hand in 3 months worth of current event papers. I waited until the last minute, as grades were being entered and frozen in the system, to sprint out of my gym class, print them at the library and run over to submit them. And I couldn't. The teacher had locked in grades literal seconds, before I opened the door, and was getting ready to leave. From an easier to a D in minutes, when it didn't need to be. 
which messed my GPA and put me toward my safer school for college. If I ever had the chance to redo high school, that'd be on my bucket list. So had a chemistry assignment due last week and I did half of it the night before. To be fair the ATA system has just been introduced, and we had a shit ton of assignments all at one time, so I forgot to do it, but also was thinking that I'll do it tomorrow night. YouTube is more important for my sanity than chemistry. My family planned a trip to go to Europe for Christmas vacation, and stupid young me decided to wait until the very last minute to pack. I was very haphazardly throwing things in my luggage, and not keeping a proper count of what I was throwing in. First off, I didn't pack nearly enough underwear. I spent the trip wearing days old underwear to make it last. This was a 3 week trip. We did manage to get our clothes washed once on the trip, but it wasn't enough for me. Second, I did not bring proper shoes. I threw in my nice chuckers that went with most outfits, but holy hell, when you're walking on cobblestone for most of the day you start to regret everything in your life that led up to that point. I ended up having to buy insoles on the trip just to make it easier. Third, I was not prepared for the weather. I live in California where the weather rarely dips below 60, so I was not prepared for snow and sub-freezing temperatures. I powered through my first two days before I caved and bought a nice puffy jacket, some shirts with layers, a beanie, a scarf, gloves, and leg thermals. Spent way too much of my spending money on clothes I'd never wear again. Lastly, the clothes that I did bring were wrinkly and not really presentable, and we didn't have access to a hot iron to press out the wrinkles. For the first two days I was walking around like a hot mess wearing dirty laundry on a walk of shame. The coat I eventually bought covered it up most of the time so it mostly became a non-issue, but I was very self-conscious about it for the first few days. Remember kids, if you're going on vacation to somewhere you've never been, so some research on the climate and weather, and pack in advance. Not mine, but it still involves me. My boyfriend was assigned homework at the beginning of the semester in September, that was due before Christmas break in December. He didn't do it despite me reminding him to over the course of those 3 months and instead waited until my birthday, which is December 13th, to cancel my birthday plans, and do homework instead. After he promised to make my birthday the best one ever I don't celebrate my birthday because my parents ruined it for me as a kid and eventually didn't allow me to celebrate it any longer, so it's a very tainted day for me. I hadn't felt that unimportant in a long time. I had a very important 12 page paper to write for school. Had to do a lot of research to do for it, think we got like 2 or 3 months to write it. And my dumbass didn't want to get started until I actually forced myself to a week before we had to turn it in. I slept about 20 hours in that whole week. I wrote down how much I slept on a note in my phone somewhere, going two days without any, while having to go to school, and I was actually a few minutes late on the day of the deadline, because I was printing out the whole thing that morning. Little bit of advice, don't be like me. I've been wanting to apply to this web design course for a year. Applications were from May to the end of this month. Procrastinated and applied only in the end of August. Course has very little spots left now, and I may not get in at all. Apparently it was a first come first serve thing. I feel terrible and desperate, and I still don't know what I'm gonna do. Waited till 1. 5 hours before the deadline, to write an art theory essay for school. Submitted it with 1 minute, to spare and went to bed. It was due at midnight that night. One week later, I get my grade back. 96%. And this is why I still do art theory as an elective folks. I keep telling myself that I could write my dissertation in just one week. I got all the data analysis ready, statistics and stuff. One month before deadline, I got bad case of anxiety. I just can't write. I get anxiety because I didn't write and I didn't write because my anxiety the cycle keep going on for one month, I can't sleep well, I get tremors, palpitations and cold sweat at night. It was hell. That one time I had a coding project that I had a month to finish. In the beginning, I was like there's a month, I can chill a bit this week. And then it was 3 weeks left. That should be enough time. I'll start tomorrow, let's relax today. And all of a sudden it was only one week left of a month long project and I hadn't even decided what I was going to code. I had the outline kinda done, 
but I didn't start writing a paper until like 10pm at night, and it was due the next day, even played a game of capture the flag around 6 to 8pm, and lost my outline which fell out of my pocket while running, so I had to retrace my steps on campus to search for it. Got an A. It wasn't just any year though, I went to UC Berkeley and my grader was a Harvard graduate. She said it was one of the best papers she read as a C. Little did she know. That's why it's very useful to outline. I did spend a considerable amount of time outlining though. I just always put off writing the paper. Because I can. Also did the same start and finish the day before thing, but still had an outline with the first draft of my thesis proposal in grad school, although I did have a good 24 hours to write it. Advisor said it was the best well written paper she got from a student. Probably because none of her previous students had English degrees. The key to a good paper is clarity and brevity. Don't be overly wordy or convoluted. People want to be able to read something and not have to go wait what? That's why outlining is useful, especially if you're a procrastinator who likes to chip away at things. When I was 16 I had a massive essay in college that had about 20 different questions that you needed to write at least a 2 pages for each one. Had from October to the end of August to do it, but wasted my time getting drunk and high since it was all new to me. Had loads of fun, but it ended up getting to August and I hadn't even started it. Managed to stressfully get it all done in a 3 weeks, but got kicked off the course anyway. So much regret. Starting the main part, 8000 words, of my final undergrad dissertation 2 weeks before it was due and only finishing it, 12 hours before hand in. Technically first draft, and I got an A. Uh, I have issues with my mental and physical health, especially this past year, that made it really difficult to do assignments in good time. Also I'm a procrastinator. Right square bracket. Not trying to get any sympathy points, but my dad always loved to go target shooting. We would go a lot in my mid slash late twenties. He got diagnosed with bladder cancer a few years back, and one day I just stopped going with him. I kept telling myself that I would go on my next week of vacation from work over and over again. Or my next weekend, that I wasn't busy. We probably didn't go shooting for two ish years. He passed away in March and I keep thinking, damn I wish I would have gone with him one more time. 